So today's topic will be on files, input, output. So in this topic, we'll be learning how to get the files, that is external files, and then work on it. So we'll be seeing how we can use the text file to get the data and then work in Python. Okay. There are some notes which is there here, which I'll be sharing it with you, but to understand easily so what i've done is i've just made some programs here like this which i'll be telling you how to work first thing is when i say file input output we'll be using this option for opening a file reading a file writing contents to a file and closing the file these are the four operations what we can do that is open read write and close so it is very simple actually to you know open the file or close the file or whatever let's say i want to open an existing file so i can open only the existing file so what we'll do we'll go here and check if you have any file so what i'll do see here i have a file here python file there is some notes here or say some text here i want to open this file understand is just to open okay we're not reading anything to open a file what we have to do let me go here just take new i just have to use this command that is open this is the variable which i'm using let's go here and i'll say open the file say fo is a variable say open and give the path so here i have to specify the path path will be this one this one let me copy this path and i'll put it here slash and i'll be taking this file when i'm using this slash say dot txt okay be very careful if at any point if you get that slash and if there is n that will be considered as next line so either i can use this like this that is use two slash or use slash like this backslash like this anything is fine let me run this okay, we use this double slash you have to put it in double quotes, sir. Put it in double quotes here. Okay. Right. Now the file is opened. We are not reading any data in that. We are just trying to open. When I say open the file, there are some parameters what we are passing. Now by default, when I say open, this will be read only. Read only means I can just read. I cannot modify it. I cannot write or I cannot. Uh, say append the data to that let's go here i have made few list of parameters which you can use it see here i have given some list of parameters i'll be explaining you few r or if you're not giving anything by default it will be as r r means read only w is used for writing then i have something called as a which is used for appending so if you understand these three that is more than enough if you still want to go and learn so many other things, so I have given here all the parameters here. I just try to understand this. So here I'll be using this R, W, and A. R is for read, W is for write, and A is for append the data. Here I can specify it as R or you just leave it. So this will be read only. If I say read only, if the file is open read only, you cannot modify it or say you cannot add any contents to that next one is the mode what i was talking about the parameter that is w how to pass that say let me copy the same thing here say comma and if i say r that means this is read only this one and this one both are same let me execute this is read only and i'll just put comment here read only file default 
suppose if you want to add something or say if you want to modify the contents of the file go here yes right i'll change this to w just have to change the mode see this is for right suppose if you want to append go here i'll say change this to a that means this will become append so i can append the data here when i say write be very careful this will overwrite all the contents will be overwritten a means the contents will be added just below the contents what we have or we can specify where we need to add the data next is about closing the file the file which has been opened should be closed so if you want to close the file just say the variable dot close no parameter just say close so now i have opened this file say fo dot close open bracket close bracket run this thing it will get closed if you want to know that whether it is closed or not so you can also go and check the mode say fo dot closed and then run this see close this too. let me run this one now let me try to run this see it is false that means it is open if i close this if i run this and then run this code see it is true that means the file is closed if you want to see the mode the file on which mode it is opened let's go here run this say fo dot mode see it will give a that means append now let me run this one the default one run let's go and check this mode see it is r run this that is writable say w so that means if you want to check the mode of the file what it is opened then i can use this variable name dot mode if you want to see whether it is closed or open then i can use this closed if you want to know the name of the file open say name run this see it will give me that name so like this we can use closed mode or name right so we saw this how to open and close let's see how to create a file or say write to a file now let me go to this file here let me just delete this we'll create a new file go to this python give the path and a file name suppose if the file is existing in the path what you are specifying then it will overwrite otherwise a new file is created if i am using the mode w now we'll use this mode w we'll copy the same thing i'll make it as w if it is r you cannot write let me just change the file name say new python file so i gave it as new python file and then i'll say fo dot write that is we'll write some contents to that say new file is created i'll just copy the same thing and i'll put it here see i'm saying open the file file dot write i am trying to write some content in that and then i'll close it if it is not closed then it will not get saved so i'll say close so i'm mentioning it as open the text file which is not available and i'm saying write and say close if this file is not available in the path what i have mentioned a new file is created and then the content is added let me just run this right let's go to that folder you can see let's see new python file let me double click on this see a new file is created the content whatever i had given here that has been saved that is when i give this w now if it is already existing let's take the same code and i'll put it here since the file is closed now now i'll say slash n give slash n so that it will go to next characters a new 
line is added. Okay. Now mention one more line saying that new line is added. Let me run this. Now let's go and check. See, we didn't save that. You have to mention it as append. So now if you see, it is overwriting. That means here we are saying W. So as I told you, when I say it is W, it will overwrite the existing file. The file is not available, then it will create a new file. So suppose if you want to add something that is append, then I'll say A. So here already I have this new line is added, then I'll say line 2 is added. This is appending. Let's run this. Let's go and check the file. See, new line what? Append. That is, it got added. Now, let me go here. I'll make it as 3. Let me run this. Let's go and check. See? So, just try to understand. R is for read, W is for write, and A is for appending. When I open this, when I open a file with mode as the write, the file is not existing, then a new file is created. If it is already existing, then the contents will be overwritten. And suppose if I'm using this A, that is append, then the data will be appended. This is for a write. Next, see, here I mentioned it as overwriting, then append. Reading the file. I already have one file. I want to read the characters. So in that case, I'll be using something called as read. Let's open this file, that is the Python file, whatever was there. We had some contents in that. It got overwritten, I think. We'll copy some content here and put it there. I'll just copy some content here and we'll make some entries here. Okay. Save this, right? So while running some code, you would have written so that it would have been. Now we'll see how to read. Okay, so let me take this. See. Open put here and then we'll say fo dot read open bracket close bracket. We're trying to read the contents. Let's run this. See, you can see the contents here. The contents, whatever is there in that file. But I can also specify from which position I need the, uh, say, contents. Here I am trying to take all the characters in the file. Now if you want to take a specific character, say this many number of characters, I can specify here. Say for example, let me take the same thing. And here I'll mention, say I want first four characters. I'll run this. See, first four characters. Or let's mention it as five here. See, first five characters. I want the next five characters. Let's go here. Just say again, I'm running that code, only that code. Run this. See, the next five characters. I want next 10 characters. Run this. See, the next 10 characters. Now, if I mention like this, so what it will do is from this position, that is from this 10, say 5 plus 5 plus 20, uh, 10, some 20th position from there, it will give me all the records, means all the data. Let me run this again. See, now I'll mention this. 
the next five characters. Now, if I go here and mention this, like this. See, from there on, from here, whatever records are there, from there it will give me the entire remaining characters. So, like this, I can read. Next, suppose if you want to bring the position of the cursor. So now when I mention it as read 5, so what it will do, it will go, it will take five, first 5 characters, the next 5 characters, so it goes on. So suppose if you want to change the position of the cursor, cursor means where I need to extract the data from here or from here, from here. I can use this something called as seek. So what seek will do is it will bring the cursor to certain position, say from certain position I need or my cursor should go to that position, then I will say seek, say for example I will go here, fo.seek and I will say 0 position that will go to the first position, right. okay see the position is 0, if you want the cursor to go, say seek, say 20th position, so it will go to 20th position. So it will just go to the 20th position. 0 means it will go here, the first position. Like this. Now suppose if you want to know where the position is. Say for example, I will go here. Let's take this. And I will say read. So it is here. Now you want to know where the position of the cursor is. fo dot tell. Run. See, it is in 5th position. It will tell me on which position it is. Now let's say f4 dot seek say 30th position and I'll run. Then I'll say f4 dot tell no parameter for tell. Let's run this. See it's in 30th position. Suppose if you want to know the position where the cursor is, then I can use this tell. Seek is to move the cursor to place the cursor wherever I need. But tell will tell me the position of the cursor. Next, suppose if you want to read a line, say I have a file, there are so many contents in that, I want to read the line, say line by line instead of character by character. Now when you go here, the read was reading the characters. What if I want to read a line, then I can use this read line. Let's go here, say f4 dot read line. Let me run this. See, from this position, that is from 30th position, whatever the line is there, it will just try to get the data. We will go here and say for f c can also say 0. That is, I am going to the starting position. Now, if I say f o dot read line and now if I run this, See, we will get the first line that is from here till wherever the enter mark is there. That is the next line. Read lines. So after this, say for example, I have this read line. Let me run this again. Now the next line will come. That is, we go here, we will check. See, first line, it will come till here. Second line. Then suppose if you want all the other remaining lines, then I will say, read lines open bracket close bracket let's run this see after this whatever is there after this um, say line whatever data is there it will just show me say from here till end it will give suppose again if you run this read line i'll get blank because all the other data has been read from the Right. Next one. The directories. The file in the directory. Directory means what? Folder. If you want to know the current directory or say the current which folder I am in, I can use this get cwd to get the current directory. Current working directory. So the cw is nothing but current working directory. So for that I have to import a library called as OS. If you go here, I want to check 
on which directory I'm actually working on. Say import OS, OS dot, then get C W D open bracket close bracket. This should show me. So what is the current directory which I'm working on? See, I'm working in this directory. I want to change the directory. That is the default directory, whatever is there that is showing. So if I want to change the directory to the current folder, what I'm working, then I have this chdir. That will change the directory. Say, for example, that means I'll be using this folder now. Let me copy this path. Say os.chdir to the path here. And again, be very careful. Give this double slash. If there is any n, then it will be a problem. So I'm trying to change the path to this one, to this folder. Let me run this. Now let me go and check the current path. Get CWD. See, this is my path now. Previously it was this one. Now this is the path. That is to get the current directory and to change the directory. Next one is, if you want to get the list of files or say the directory, the list of files in that particular directory, then I can say list dir. So what this list dir will do is, it will give me the current directories, folders or the files available. Suppose if you are working on some project, you want to know what all files are available, then what I'll do, I'll say os dot list dir open bracket close bracket you can see that i'm not specified anything here i'm just saying open bracket close bracket and i'll run this see all the files in that particular folder will be given here suppose i want the list of directories from another folder let's go here let's say i want the list of files let's take this one Take, look, we have many files here. I want to take the list of files in this folder. I'll go here, I'll say os dot list dir and give this path. Let's give slash here like this and then run this. See, all the files which are available in that folder will be listed. Right. This is for listing. Creating a new folder or a directory. You just have to mention the folder name. That means make directory mkdir. Let's go here. I'll say os.mkdir. Specify the new folder name. Say new Python folder. Is what the name of the directory directory or folder let me run this here i'm not specified any path let me run this let's go and check the path python see new python folder has been created no contents in that if you want to create a folder in specific path then what i'll do let's say i'll create in this path put it here and then let me run this let's go and check in that path see new folder has been created fine this is to make a directory or say create a directory renaming renaming suppose if you want to rename a directory then I can just give the old name, the new name and the old name. Sorry, this will be the old name and the new name. We'll go here. Now we have created one directory, say in the current folder, also in the specific folder. I'll say OS dot rename open bracket. It lasts for the old name. Let me take this old name. 
put it here, comma, let's say Python folder three. That is, I'm trying to rename the current directory. That is current folder, the current folder, whatever the folder has been created, that one. Run this, let's go and check. See, Python folder renamed. Let's go and see, rename the specific folder. Let's say, I'll copy here, paste it here. Same thing you have to do it here also, because it has to take the path. Now let me run this. Let's go and check in that path. See, it has got renamed. So you can rename the file like this. Right. Removing a directory or deleting a file. You should be a little careful while removing the files. If you remove, then again, you will not get it back. So we have two things. One is remove, which is used for deleting a file. RM, DIR, that is for removing a folder. Now let's see. Go here. Take this and we'll see. We'll remove this new Python file. Let's go to our code. Say OS start. Remove. Then let's take the file name new Python file. Put it in double quotes. Then let me run this. So dot txt. Let's go and check see. The file got deleted. Give the extension, I had not given the extension, so it was not considering that uh, file. So I mentioned it as new python file.txt. Suppose if there is any file you know created in any other folders, so here somewhere you just have to mention the path here. That's all. So if you mention the path, if any files are there with this name, that will be deleted. But suppose if you want to delete a folder or say the directory let's go here if you see here i've created one folder here that is python folder renamed now it is actually renamed so i have to remove that then i'll say os dot rm dir then i'll specify this folder name let's run this let's go back and check see that folder is deleted okay fine that means if you want to delete any folder, you can delete like this. Or if you want to delete a file, you can delete. But if I have a folder, let me create one folder here. Say, my PIR. Okay, one, one file I've created. Let me copy some data. Let's copy this. And I'll put it here. Now we'll use the same code to delete this pydir say os dot rmdir say py that is i'm trying to remove that folder just observe what will happen if i run this i cannot delete this because this rmdir remove directory will work only if the folder is empty otherwise it will not allow you cannot delete a folder by using rm dir that is remote directory so what should we do in this case so i have one library which you can import that is shut il so what this will do is this will have one function called as rm3 which will remove the folder even if you have any folders or subfolders or any files in that let me just import this go you see and say import shutil then that function i'll call and say rm3 and if i run this let me just go here my dir run this see now let's go back and check folder is 
removed. So this is for input, output, functions and the file management and folder management or say directory management. Right? Okay. Let me show you one more thing. Here I have something called as exceptions. These exceptions, you know, it's like to track the errors. So suppose if you have any error, how to handle it? That's all. Here, just keep in mind three things. One is try, accept, finally. This is something like if error in our Excel. So what will happen? Say, for example, let's go here. I'll write one code. Say, num1 equals 200, num2 equals 20. Then here, we'll say, print num1 divided by num. A small code I've written. Let me run this. I'm getting a result, 10.0. Let me make it as zero. I just change this to zero. Now let me run this. See? I'm getting an error. If you are getting any errors like this, you have to handle it such a way that if some value is getting divided by zero, I should get some result here instead of getting this error. So what will happen when I'm actually accepting some data? It's not that always this value will be available. So there are chances that this might be zero. In that case, what to do? So if you feel that there are some situations where you cannot avoid these kind of situations, then you can use something called as exception handling. That is nothing but you are trying to handle the errors. The syntax will be like this. Try the program statements, whatever is there. Then I'll say accept and the statement if I'm getting any error. If suppose if you want to give multiple exceptions, then you can give the exceptions here. You can also give something called as else. That means if these errors are not there, else give one statement here saying that, okay, there was no errors here. So you can execute this. Apart from this, except and else, you have something called as finally. So what this finally will do is whether there is an error or not, this statement will get executed. When I say try, the statements will be available. If there are any errors, then this except whatever is there, I'll get this statement to be executed. Else is used if you think that nothing is, you know, there are no errors, but this one will get executed, whether the error is there or not. Let's try, see here, go here, the same program, let me copy, and I'll put it here. Now I'll give try. Like this. Just put a try here. Okay. Now I'm using this code here saying that print num1 divided by num2. Here I'll say accept say print cannot divide the number by zero. So if there are any errors, what it will do, it will come to this part. I can also use else. Say print number is not zero. Let me run this now. See? cannot divide the number by zero. That means it is not throwing error, error here, any error here. So it is printing this statement. Now let me go here and make it as well. Let me run this. See, I'm getting the result here. And it is saying the number is not zero. Same thing, suppose if you want to use this finally. print say the calculation was successful it means finally means 
whether it is error or not it is not bothered it is just printing this now let's go here and run this see the calculation was successful now let me make it zero and if i run this see this statement is anyways executing that means this finally if you think you want to give it you can give it that is it will come out see it will not uh, you know consider this one it will just print this statement so this is actually error you know the handling or say exception handling so here i given so many examples like that so wherever you feel that the errors are coming you can just go and you can try that so i have a detailed explanation about that so if you want you can go through that you will get so many exceptions like that let's open it and i'll show you see here there are different different you know errors i have mentioned here if you want you can just go and check this okay so same like you know different examples are given here see same syntax here okay so whenever you are opening a file and if the file is not found then i can say input output error so file cannot be found so just now we saw one uh, function here say here if the file is not there then there will be some error so how to handle that so you can go and put this try and open the file if the file is not there then go and say accept and say file cannot be found so you can give something like that. so wherever you feel that there is any error we can mention that so i have given some examples here just try these things it will be very it's very easy actually but uh, it is left to you whether you have to put this error handler or not but it's good practice if you think that there are some unavoidable situations where you can uh, you know avoid getting these kind of errors so instead i can put this um, say try accept and finally that is the error handling but this will actually save you know uh, not only the time but also uh, getting some errors unwanted errors like this so you can handle the errors like this okay